Good morning, and welcome to the Lone Star Weekly Business Hour. Your host, Rick Schisler, is a Silver Fox advisor who personally has over 40 years of experience as a serial entrepreneur. So sit back, pull out your pad and pencil, and get ready to take notes as we join Rick Schisler in his Lone Star Weekly Business Hour. Welcome and thank you for joining us for this edition of the Weekly Business Hour. This is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox Advisor and your host for the Weekly Business Hour. And let me tell you, folks, I'm glad to be back in the chair this morning. Been off for a couple of weeks taking care of some personal business, and of course we had our Memorial Day holiday. Well, let's get started with today's show. We'll start uh, first with our thought for the week uh, entitled Challenges. Then a quick check-in with Dick on the business of Lone Star. And then I'm pleased to announce that Jorge Torres, owner of Window Genie here in the Woodlands, will join us in the studio to share his business story. And to close out the show, my Silver Fox Advisor Tip of the Week will consider customer retention. So sit back, get ready, pull out your pad and pen, and let's get started. First, I want to remind you that if you have a question or a thought or a comment uh, during the course of the show or even after the show, please email it to me. My email address here at the station, rick at irlonestar.com. Thought for the week, challenges. We all have challenges of one kind or another. A uh, great example right now, uh, in the past week or two, we've had a lot of rain and unfortunately some flooding. Uh, this has been a challenge to a lot of people in our community, both personally and in business. You're challenged with what to do, how to get your home cleaned up, how to get back in as the waters recede. Also, importantly, your business, if you have a business that was affected by the flooding. I talked to many business owners this past week, and they had a situation where their business location was fine, but their employees couldn't get to work. It was flooded in their areas. They were unable to get out of their homes, and therefore the businesses suffered as well. So the challenge is not only to get the doors back open, but it's to reach out to the customers and the clients, catch up on work, uh, try to bring business uh, back in, get things running again. So it's been a lost week. It's a huge challenge in the life of a business. How do you personally meet the challenges that come your way? Everyone deals with challenges in uh, a different way, whether it's a big challenge like the rain and the flood or the small challenges, just like getting out of bed in the morning. Uh, it's important that we develop our own personality, if you will, on how to meet challenges. I happen to believe that one of the most important elements in being successful in business is how we meet challenges. And these don't necessarily have to be, again, the big challenges, like the floods, huge challenge to many people, but how you meet the small challenges, whether it's an employee who's late to work or delivery that's not on time or you have problems just getting your front door locked to work, so you're trying to open up in the morning. You have to meet these challenges. You have to roll with the punches, as they used to say. And it's important that you develop a personality, in my opinion, on how you handle these things. Be calm, collected, even though your personality, your personal personality may be to get excited. You've got to realize this is just one step, one day in the life of your business. Your ability to accept and handle your challenges make all the difference in the world to you and your business. I'm wishing you success in this, and if you'd like to talk about it, again, please email me at rick at irlonestar.com. Be glad to communicate with you and give you some ideas on how to handle your business challenges. You're in the right place if you're a business owner, manager, or you're considering starting your own business. Because the weekly business hours where Montgomery County comes to talk about the latest in business news, ideas to improve your business, and to hear from some of our own local business leaders on how they have found success right here in Montgomery County. Remember, we're on Facebook. Uh, you can find the weekly business hour on Facebook, and if you like the show, please like us there. All our shows are posted there a day or two after the show, so you can listen to the podcast there if you, in fact, missed the show or missed part of the show. Now let's check in on the business right here at Lone Star. Dick, what's on tap for Lone Star this coming week? Uh, we have two huge announcements I want to let your audience know, Rick, is today we have a new show premiering from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. every Monday. 
It is Nerd Thug Radio. It is a pop culture show focusing everything around movies, comics, music, all that kind of stuff. It's a two-hour program, and it's podcasted right after the show here on Lone Star Community Radio. Again, that's Nerd Thug Radio premiering today from 1 to 3 p.m. right after East Montgomery County News with Margie Taylor. And another note I want to have people write down is on the week of July 18th, that is our final premiere week for the FM Signals. 104.5, 106.1, 106.1 will be up and running the week of July 18th. So we encourage everybody to go in their cars and get those presets ready for 104.5, 106.1 for Lone Star Community Radio. Well, Dick, thanks for the great news. It's great to hear any business, particularly here at Lone Star, that things are growing, changing, uh, with the ever-changing world out there, and uh, congratulations to you and Lone Star for that. Now, remember, again, we are on Facebook at the Weekly Business Hour, so if you need to get in touch with us or you want to stay in touch with the program, it's a place to go. Well, now we come to my favorite part of the show, and that's when we talk to our studio guest. And I am so pleased to have Jorge Torres, the owner of Winda Genie in the Woodlands, here with us today. Jorge, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you very much, Rick. Thanks for the invitation. Well, first of all, Window Genie. Uh, what is Window Genie? Well, uh, Window Genie is a service company um, that operates as a franchise system with, pre- with presence in most uh, states of the country and which provides uh, basically cleaning services to homes, also to businesses, but it's more concentrated on residential work. Basically, um, uh, our core service would be window cleaning and uh, other three very important services are pressure washing, window tinting, and gutter cleaning. Okay, so this is essentially the type of services that we render. There are other associated services that we may uh, help, uh, mainly homeowners with such as cleaning chandeliers or coach lights or other types of related uh, uh, glass uh, components of a home. But that's basically how it works. It's a franchise. Uh, It's a franchise system. It's a mature franchise system. And uh, in our personal case, we have been in operations for around eight months now. And uh, I would say with the advice and know-how provided by the franchisor, in a very, uh, very nice, very successful manner. We are still learning, but I think we're doing good. You know, that's interesting, Jorge. And you, as we discussed prior to the show, you have a wonderful story, in my opinion. You're a, you're a first-generation immigrant to this country. Uh, please share briefly, if you would, your journey to come to the United States. Absolutely, Rick. In my case, uh, I would say I have been... Uh, I have had a relation with the U.S. for a long time. Since uh, I was very young, I started coming here often on vacation, mainly, but for many, many times. uh, I would say one year, yes, one year, no, perhaps, since the late 60s. And uh, at the same time, my prior work uh, also uh, made me come to the country often. And uh, so... I, I would say I, I have had a, a relationship and I have get to know American people from a long time now. No? And uh, why am I here now living in these countries? Because uh, my sons, in part, wanted to study here. For us, for, for me and my wife, it was very important to be with them. You know, in our country, the, the, the family concept is, is, a, is a nucleus of, of society, so... So we wouldn't like to let them go, go alone. We came with them, and we came with the idea also, in my case, of doing something here, different to what I have done in the past. So uh, that's why I decided to look for a franchise, to come to live here, to follow all the process that I have to follow, which is complicated, lengthy, but doable. So we did it. We came here. We were authorized to work here. And, uh, and that's how we started this franchise. After looking for other alternatives and talking to people, that's how we decided to, to come here and start with this business. Now, you came from Mexico, correct? Yep, and correct. in Mexico, what kind of business were you in? 
Okay, uh, in Mexico, I practiced corporate law, mainly on international matters for 30 years. So I was the partner of a corporate law firm, uh, a major corporate law firm in Mexico City for many, many years. I did transactional work, real estate work, and uh, mergers and acquisitions, etc. Something, as you may imagine, very different to what I'm doing now. I, I think I did good. I'm, I'm satisfied with that. I, what, what I have done on that field. And, uh, uh, but I thought at the same time as my sons were coming here, I, I thought doing something different. It, it was 30 years of doing that. So uh, I think the two uh, circumstances came together and, and we decided just to take advantage of them and and, and, and come here and do something completely different. Yeah? Well, you know, that's interesting because you have done, I mean, you were in a corporate environment in the law and yeah. now you're in a small business environment. Uh, what advice would you have for people to make that kind of transition? What, what, what did you learn in making that change? Well, uh, I would say you have to think it well. You have to look for alternatives, mainly in a case like mine, where I had a, a, a background uh, so different to what I do now. But I looked to several alternatives. Uh, don't do too much because that may also, in my opinion, be, may be prejudicial. You have to concentrate on four, three, four, five, and th th at least that's what I think, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, make a, a thorough analysis of not only the, the, the service or good service to be provided or goods to be sold, but also who is behind, in the case of franchise, who is behind that franchise. Knowing the people that is going to provide you with the systems, with the know-how, et cetera, to operate your business is, for me, it was crucial that it was decent, professional people. And, and, and I was very lucky, but no doubt I, I, I got... Uh, involved in this franchise in part because of that, no? So look at the product, look at the service to be provided, look who is behind it. And decide whether you want to go with something which is more mature. In my case, I looked for a mature franchise or decide if you want to go with something newer, perhaps more risky, perhaps less, less expensive, it depends. But you have to think very well what you want. And uh, as I said, in my case, I looked for, for a mature franchise, so something that has been proven and has worked well, in my opinion. Well, you know, you've got a great story of uh, making that transition, and, and anyone listening to the program today or in, the, in our podcast realizing that you can make this transition from a corporate environment, in your case, Jorge, 30 years, uh, totally different kind of business, the law, and now on your way to being a successful small business person. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you'll stay with us. We're going to take a commercial break, and then we're going to come back and visit with Jorge a little bit more about the ins and outs of running his small business. Taylor Eyes PR works exclusively to get your business noticed. Public relations is how others perceive you and your company. By tailorizing the marketing strategy exclusively to your business, your story is told. Taylor Eyes PR services include networking, social media, blogs, press releases, public appearances, and event planning. To learn about Taylor Eyes PR, call Margie Taylor at 936-828-6881 or visit the website at taylorizedpr.com. My business is tailored to yours. This is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox Advisor and the host of the Weekly Business Hour. And we're here today talking to Jorge Torres, uh, who is the owner of a Window Genie franchise. Jorge, when we were uh, went to commercial, we had talked a little bit about your unique background and coming to this country as a first-generation immigrant and going into business for yourself. Uh, that's a lot to take on, but uh, eight months in, how do you feel at this point? I feel, oh, thanks, Rick. I feel, I feel good. I feel Satisfied. I think I still have a lot of a lot of challenges ahead. I'm still learning, as you may imagine, and uh, I have to study. I have to learn on different areas, not only uh, the the business services as such, but also to understand better 
internet advertising and uh, which uh, and by the way this franchise is, is is very focused on internet advertising and so I'm learning all those uh, uh, new areas for me uh, at the same time learning uh, how to uh, better deal with employees because as you may imagine these employees are very different from the type of law clerks I used to, to work in the past or paralegals or other attorneys. So <clears throat> I'm dealing with technicians now. I have been very lucky to find, I think, the, the right people. And um, two of them have been with me now for several months. But labor relations, uh, it's a lot of things at the same time. It's a learning process. But so far, I, I'm happy. I'm happy with what I'm doing. Well, that's great. Uh, like I said, it's a lot to take on. At this point, again, I recognize you've only been at it for, in a sense, a short time, eight eight months. But so far, what do you think that your personal secret is to success in your business? Well, I, I think I learned this from my prior work, two things which for me are crucial. And one is you should try to render a service of excellence, an excellent service better than the others and you have to focus and do what you have to do and train your people to the extent you can so that they can provide a service uh, better than others which is excellent and the other key issue for me is is customer service customer service is also of the essence we all do mistakes we all have errors on occasion so if that happens you should go back face the situation, face the client, and fix what you have to fix. You have to call your customers, you have to hear from them if they are happy. If they are not happy, why are they not happy? You should go back, many times talk personally to them, and fix whatever has to be fixed. If it has a cost, it has a cost. It will later be paid, later be paid by itself. When people talk good about you because you are giving the customer what he expects. So I learned that on, 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 on my prior uh, career, and now that philosophy, I'm applying it in, my, in this business. And I think those two principles are very important. And of course, the franchise system, the franchisor, teaches exactly the same thing. No? So do a great service, be better than others, have a great customer service. I think that's uh, those are two pillars, uh, two foundations of a, a successful business, in my opinion. You know, that's some great advice. One of the things, and uh -huh. you mentioned uh, customer service, uh, I would assume, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but referrals have to be an important part of your business. Absolutely. Very important. Very important. Referrals are of the essence also. So if you do uh, what I mentioned or you try to do it you will ask for referrals and you will likely be given referrals or many times they will give you referrals even if you don't ask for them when they are happy when the customer is happy so you have to do that referrals are basic in this uh, job and in any other in any other in my prior job it was the same you give a good service you will refer it with our clients no so you are absolutely right referrals very important to get those to get those referrals, good service, and good customer service. You mentioned uh, in the area of marketing that the franchise you're with, the Window Genie franchises, does some advertising on the internet. Do you do any other type of marketing to sell your business besides yeah. the referrals and the internet? Yeah, we we do. Let, let let me tell you on the internet. Just to speak briefly, we do Facebook, we do uh, Google AdWords, we do. Uh, Basically, a lot with Google, uh, uh, Facebook. The franchisor is in Twitter also. And uh, so, so we do that type of advertising internet. Uh, there, for sure, are other aspects which don't come to mind. I'm mentioning only the, the, the main things that come to my mind. But we also do um, uh, mail advertising, you know, money mailer, backpack, that, those types of, of, of uh, coupons that people receive in their homes with certain deals or offers that may be interesting to them. So uh, that's other type of advertising. And the other thing is we 
uh, advertise also or promote ourselves with uh, companies such as Home Advisor or Angie's List uh, or Thumbtack. So we try to, again, on all those areas, uh, be present, no? Be present and honestly, the franchisor does an incredible and amazing job handling and managing these, uh, all these different uh, areas of our advertising and not giving, not giving us, us uh, counsel or ideas on how to do things, but participating actively and, and, and give us all the guidance. No? So that's more or less the type of, adver of advertising that we do. Now, what you're saying is your franchise uh, operator actually takes care of some of your marketing for you? I would say we do it, they guide us. In, for instance, in Facebook, they, 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 they are very, very, very involved uh, in, in all the advertising there, very involved directly. No? So uh, they do a lot there. Uh, on the others, they tell us how to do it, they put us in contact with people, they see what we're doing. If we're not doing right, they give us ideas of how to, to work better. So that's why the franchise system or scheme is, 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 is interesting and it's helpful. You have to pay royalties on one hand. People maybe don't like to do it, but the know-how that they developed over the years has a, a, a very big value. No? So uh, all that transfer of know-how and, and uh, presence all the time for any item that arises is very valuable. Many times we're on the field, we have a problem there. At that moment, I can take the phone or send an email or send a text message or whatever, and they will assist us to solve the situation. No? So all of that has a value, and, uh, and, and, and this, all this advertising structure that crea they created is, is fantastic. I mean, they do it very well. So we are very happy about that. You know, you, you, you recall or, or caused me to recall some of the other folks that have been on this program that I've interviewed that have chosen to do what you did is go the franchise route. Uh, and as you and I discussed earlier, they, they all seem to be very pleased because, and, and those who are thinking of going in business, I think you, you really hit the nail on the head. If you feel like you need assistance in marketing, uh, even in the technical aspects of the application of your business and whatnot, uh, particularly if you're not from that industry, Franchising sounds like a really good way to go to get a lot of support, uh, a lot of good help if you select the right franchise. Absolutely, I fully agree. And uh, during the process of, of, of uh, dealing with the franchise store for, for buying this franchise and for me being accepted as a franchisee because they really do a very thorough analysis and it's a very well thought process of interviews with them over the phone, visits to their headquarters, talking to all the franchisors. So uh, I would say uh, uh, some, uh, something all other franchisors told me is in order to be successful, you apply the model, okay? You have a model, you have a business model, use it. That, this doesn't mean you cannot bring new ideas. You can, of course you can and you should, no? But don't deviate from the model. Or, or don't do things contrary to the model, thinking that they may work better without discussing them with the franchise or because that may be a route to failing, no? If you go apart of, of, of really what, what has been proven and, and uh, uh, what is the structure created for this business, no? So again, this doesn't mean don't bring ideas. Bring ideas. A lot of people bring very good ideas uh, which complement or supplement all this all this scheme, no? But follow the model. That's a, an advice that for me was very important. Well, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, we've got a, a minute or so left here. What's your next step in your development of your business? Where, where's, what's the future, future look like? Well, this is a scalable business. I, I think I need to grow it step by step. Uh, I think... Uh, you start with a small infrastructure because you, 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 you can serve few homes or businesses. You don't have the experience. Your technicians are also somehow learning. Then you give the next step. You get another truck. You hire more people. No? And you start 
uh, providing more services. I think in my case, I need to grow it more. I need to grow it more. I need to grow my, my, my customer base. That's essential, no? And uh, we have the tools to do it. We just have to do it. And, and we have to do it carefully, step by step, give me a good service. That's, uh, and that's what I think my, 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 as I envision my future, is growing my business. Growing my, my, my business and giving a better service each day to the extent I can, have more satisfied customers and be able to provide the service to more people, no? Well, it sounds like very worthy and lofty goals and very doable here in Montgomery County. Or hey, if someone wants to get in touch with you uh, to talk to you about your business or to perhaps engage you, what's the best way for them to do it? Uh, if they can do it through the, through the internet, I would be very happy to, to talk to anyone. Uh, What's your address? My address is J Torres, T as in Tower, O R R E S, at windowgenie.com. Okay. Well, thank you, Jorge, for taking time out of your busy day and growing your business to join us. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll ask you to stay with us and come back. Uh, We'll have some ideas and hopefully some news that you can use today. Talk to you in just a minute. Are you planning on growing, expanding, or possibly selling your business? All of these business opportunities require developing strategies and setting goals in order to achieve success. Providing specialized consulting in these and other key business decisions is what Silver Fox Advisors have been doing since 1986. Let us help you today. Call us at 713-343-3718. It might be the most profitable call that you ever make. Running a business is hard. Pressure to maximize profits and minimize loss continue to grow. Schooley Mitchell of Houston can help. Their independent consultants will ensure you are receiving the best communications and credit card processing services at the best prices. Most importantly, their services are completely risk-free. They don't find savings for you. There is no fee. Contact Schooley Mitchell of Houston today to find out. Call 832-314-1815 or visit their website at schooleymitchell.com forward slash jmholio. Good morning. You're listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox advisor and host of the show. Well, we're in that part of the show where I try to impart some ideas and perhaps some news that I hope you can use in your business today. And the first thing I want to talk about today, interesting article I came across, and it really caused me to do some heavy thinking, if you will. Uh, Not too heavy, though, but heavy thinking consideration because I work as some of you know, with a bunch of clients, a number of clients throughout the greater Houston area, Montgomery County, and we're always talking about growing our businesses, grow, 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 build, 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 uh, always on a fast track. Uh, that's fairly normal, though I have one or two clients that uh, take an exception and they want to grow very slowly, very methodically, uh, very carefully. Uh, some people would say they're not the risk takers that others are, but one of the messages we usually get in business is you've got to grow, you've got to grow, you've got to grow. Uh, And I've heard that all my career. And again, I still work with a number of people that are on that track. And I normally myself am on that track. But there was a very interesting article published last week in the Wall Street Journal, written by Lindsey Gelman, uh, published on June 1st. And it was entitled, uh, Go Slow, Think Small. Uh, This is a very interesting idea that when you start a business, regardless really of the kind of business, uh, that you should think first about going slow and think about getting small. Uh, And there were some examples in here. Etsy, uh, if you're familiar with that internet uh, uh, phenomena, if you will. Uh, It's a store, if you will, an online store that sells craft-made goods, handmade goods. They've had a lot of success. Uh, They have a valuation uh, just north of $1.8 billion dollars. Uh, made up of really a community of merchants. But what they've done with some of the money they've made in their business, they've supported uh, a number of opportunities for people who want to get in business to receive some education, a free business education, one of which is the Good Work Institute. Uh, and it, part of the philosophy is that when you start a business, that you should grow slowly. Uh, it's very important of uh, just getting away from that concept. Uh, of growing to grow. 
And I think that's the fine line that we need to talk through is the fact that you grow to grow to reach a certain size. And again, we see that all the time. We look at large businesses, particularly those online phenomena like Facebook, because you've got to take that market share and you got to take it now or you'll get ground under by those that come behind you. But the idea that you can build a small business and you can grow small uh, and go slow doesn't mean you eventually don't grow large. Uh, but there were some good examples in this in this article that I I picked up on, and one of them was a an individual who opened a business named Nuchus uh, in uh, New York City uh, to sell empanadas, all kinds of empanadas, restaurant business, basically working off a food car- cart type situation. Uh, he borrowed money and over five years built his business up, had forty employees. Uh, had been on the Goldman Sachs 10,000 small business program, done a lot of things right, was able to manu- borrow a million dollars to build a manufacturing facility, and uh, he began f- providing empanadas to gourmet grocers and so on and so forth. But then he went in the Eatsy program, and they, again, urged him to shift his focus from expansion to boosting standards for both product quality as well as sustainability. And since completing that, He's changed his business model around. Uh, for an example, he's sourcing his uh, ingredients from local farmers. He's done a lot of things. Still has five locations, raised the price of his empanadas to be a premium price product. And he's really happy about what he's done because he knows he's got a quality business. Uh, he says, it's not that we stop growing. It's about figuring out who we want to grow with. Uh, and I think that's a very important point is again, grow, 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 it can work. It's very important in some industries. Uh, but in a lot of times, if we're really growing a small business, uh, just like the guest we had previously, Jorge Torres, on the show, he's growing a small local business. And when I say small, startup type business, he wants to expand. You heard him share his goals. Nothing wrong with any of that. But be sure that you're doing so in a quality way and I think that's the important difference is that you're not growing for gross sake alone but you're looking for quality and sustainability of your business switch gears just for a moment Uh, this is a news item I think it's a very important item uh, for those who have retail or storefront businesses in Montgomery County apparently they've begun a study on highway 105 primarily from uh, I-45 to 2854 about expansion, about mobility. And this is not just about widening the road, but anyone who has a business or who travels that road, uh, lives off that road or commutes to that road, realizes a number of times during the day it can become very crowded. Uh, there are also a number of hazards. Uh, there have been wrecks uh, and so on and so forth. But the discussion has begun. And I think, again, if that road is part of your life, personal or business, you need to be aware of that. Uh, they had a meeting uh, most recently on the 24th, uh, May 25th, had hundreds of people come and put, give their input. And I think it's very important that if you are affected by Highway 105, which is a major highway in the Montgomery County area, that you keep an eye on it. Um, please note, TxDOT doesn't have any funding uh, to fund any of the projects that are being discussed at this point, but the discussion, it has begun. So be aware of it. And be prepared to be involved if you're affected, but at the very least, stay up with what's going on. The last item I'd like to talk about today, uh, as much time as we have that's allowed, and if not, I'm going to pick up with this, because I think this is, it's been important. It's something I personally was involved in 20, 25 years ago when it seemed to first start on a wide scale, and that's working remotely. Uh, And the question is always out there, how to make remote work actually work? And that means working for the business as well as for the employee. And I think that's very, very important to many businesses. If you have one or more employees, unless you need them in a storefront situation, you need them to answer a phone in the office, and even that's changed. Uh, Offices are answering their phones at remote locations these days, so not unusual at all. But the fact is, and kind of like the 105 project, Uh, Traveling to and from places, particularly work, sometimes gets very challenging. Uh, There's a lot of other reasons to work remotely, but that's the one that sort of resonates with me personally. 
So there are a lot of good reasons to work remotely. Uh, the convenience factor uh, in certain situations, family situations, but you've got to go about it the correct way. And I know a number of people personally who work for other people that work remotely at least once a week, maybe twice a week. Uh, I know a handful of people who work every day remotely. Many times those are people in the sales part of business where they travel around, but they work out of their homes. That's the bottom line. They work from home. They travel to their appointments. They don't go to an office uh, except on occasion. Uh, they check in at the office, their meetings and whatnot. But there's several things you need to consider when you look at your workforce if you're going to consider uh, working remotely. And again, it's becoming more and more popular. In fact, I dare say if you interview employees today, you will find people who in their career have already worked remotely and they'll be willing to give you their opinion about it because it doesn't work for everybody. And keep that in mind as we kind of go through this discussion in the next few minutes. First of all, it's a setup and technology. That to me is the core is that when you set up people to work remotely, you need to remember that they're employees and they have to stay connected to the business. Many times, and I've seen this particularly 20 years ago, 10 years ago, uh, the business would go, I'll use the word cheap, on the technology. Now, sometimes it was a matter of dollars. Sometimes it was more of a matter of they didn't really think it through. They got in a hurry. And that may not be cheap, but they got in a hurry and they just grab things off the shelf. Uh, they didn't seek outside advice. And today, many, many, for example, IT companies that would service your business are up to speed on what works and what doesn't work remotely. Because again, it is critical if you're gonna find success in working people remotely, that they are connected to the business. Very important the employee feels connected. Very important that their fellow employees feel they're connected. And really, really important that your customers and clients feel like that employee is in the business. So don't go cheap with technology, whether it be uh, vocal, whether it be uh, the computer, uh, how they work. It's not a matter of buying the best computer. It's the connection. It's the communication piece where I think that people fall down. And remember, when you buy that connection piece, when you connect the voice and you connect the data, the IP, that you've got to make sure security measures are in place because we all know what goes on every day in the world with hacking and intervention by outsiders. It needs to make sure that your team in the office is connected in a way that you're staying secure. Don't forget security. It is something that will bite you and can bite you very badly if not considered correctly. Well, I'm going to end the discussion there, and I'm going to pick it up next time because I think there's some other issues, and I've had some people reach out to me and ask some questions related to this, and I think it's a very important uh, issue. So we'll bring it up next Monday. Uh, we're going to take a short break now, and when we come back, I'm going to give you my Silver Fox thought of the week about customer retention. So please stay with us, and we'll be right back with you. Are you paying too much for your personal or business insurance? Patricia Cooper Insurance on FM 1488 and Tamina Road is an independent agency that can shop multiple carriers to find the best rates and coverages to fit your specific needs. Call us today at 281-356-9955 and let us go to work for you. Patricia Cooper Insurance, where our customers are treated like family. This is Rick Schistler, your Silver Fox Advisor and the host of the Weekly Business Hour. Welcome you back to our final segment of today's show. Let me remind you once again that Lone Star Community Radio will soon be available on FM 104.5 and 106.1 on your radio dial, offering you, our listener, both tune-in and Internet radio stations. Well, our final piece for the day, as it usually is, is my Silver Fox Tip of the Week. And this week... I want to talk a little bit about customer retention. I uh, started with a quote from Winston Churchill, who, among other things, was the Prime Minister of England during the Second World War. And at one point, Winston commented, never, never, never give up. 
Well, that applies, I think, very well to the idea of customer retention. Customer retention is a challenge each and every day to every business that I personally have ever been in touch with, and I suspect any business. How do we retain those customers? It's an enormous factor for success in any business out there, whether it sells directly to consumers or business to business. Let me offer you a few tips in the time we have today that perhaps will help you and your business retain your customers, which is so important to the success of your business. First of all, that managing expectations. You know, everything begins with an expectation. In the case of customer service, your customers have an expectation. Typically, they expect what I'll call phenomenal results. And when they only get good results, they are a little disappointed. Uh, Are they disappointed enough to leave and try someone else? I don't know. But the fact is that you have to manage expectations. You as the business owner who provides the product or service is the one that sets the expectation. So be sure to set expectations that I'll say are moderate and realistic so that in the long term, you and the people who work for you can meet those expectations. And we know when you exceed them, well, that's just a home run for your business. And that leads me to the second thing I'd like to mention. Always strive to deliver more than you promised. That means going above and beyond the call of duty and giving your customer things they didn't expect. Now, if you've set the correct level of expectation, hopefully one that, as I said, is moderate, then when you really step out and offer something, and this could be an everyday offering, it's not just a challenging customer service situation, every day, like a little bonus product, or you offer them a percent off next time they work with you, whatever it might be, all of this plays into going above and beyond. The third thing, which I happen to believe is one of the most important things, something we talk about uh, in daily life today, and that's about being transparent. Uh, I'm not sure that I understand what that is, and I'm not sure that many people do. But a customer needs to feel that they trust you. So transparency and trust kind of work together. If your business is transparent in its communication to the customer, then the customer will begin to trust you. And you probably already know, or I hope you know, that trust is one of the most important characteristics of a successful business, that you can trust the business, that the product or service they offer will always be at or above a certain level. It's very important that you communicate with your customers on a regular basis. Uh, You can do this through meetings. You can send out updates. It all depends on the kind of business you are. You need to be proactive in addressing problems. You need to be proactive uh, in doing everything for the customer. You never want a problem to get worse. The fourth thing is, and this really flows directly from uh, the last uh, part that I mentioned on staying transparent, and that's encouraging loyalty. Uh, It's important to build on loyalty. Yes, if I'm transparent, yes, if I succeed, Uh, expectations, all this should encourage loyalty. But I think loyalty is something that we've got to measure in our business. We need to look for some kind of data point, if you will, like repeat business, size of transaction. I think we need to measure some kind of accounting uh, form there, a number or numbers that you can track to see how you're doing, particularly as your business grows. You've got to give your uh, customer a reason to stick with you. It's got to be a little bit different than your competitors. This one to me is a challenge for most of us in small business, but if we can develop loyalty or loyalty programs as we've heard about, then we're gonna have a higher degree of customer retention. The next item I'd like to mention, and I think this is something that has to really be inherent within you and the people that work for you. And that's you've got to get personal. You've got to communicate with your customers on a personal basis. And this applies to online businesses, perhaps more so than front store businesses. And that is the idea that you communicate with your customers on some level, whether it be an email or preferably in a voice call on a one-to-one basis. The other thing we can do, and I've even received this type of service from online companies, are handwritten notes, even small gifts 
or some kind of personal exchange, an offer for advice on how to install something, make sure that customer knows they are very valued and it's personal. It's personal. Staying top of mind is also another point that needs to be remembered. We need to stay at the top of the customer's mind so that we know they know we're there when they need us. I've given you some things to think about. I think it's important. Customer attention needs to be a part of your business. It needs to be written down in your processes and procedures, and you need to be training, working on it, and thinking about it all the time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you joining us today. I remind you to visit our website at IRLoneStar.com to stay up on everything that's happening in Montgomery County, and I encourage you to stick around. Uh, East Montgomery uh, is coming up right after the show with Margie Taylor. Margie always has a great, enlightening show with some wonderful guests, and I encourage you to stay tuned and pick up on Margie's show. And as we close the show today, I want to give a big Lone Star thanks to all our sponsors and ask you to please put a note on your calendar to join us next Monday right here on IRLoneStar.com at 11 a.m. Until then, stay engaged and keep your focus on what counts in your business. Thanks for checking out this production on Lone Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's radio station. For more information on this show and other shows on Lone Star, check us out online at IRLoneStar.com. If you're interested in sponsoring a program on Lone Star Community Radio and reaching the local audience of Montgomery County on FM, Internet, and TV media, please call 936-647-5747 or contact us online at IRLoneStar.com. This recording is a Lone Star Community Radio production, produced by the show host and Dick Schistler of Lone Star Community Radio. Interested in volunteering as a music DJ or starting your own talk show? Yeah, contact Dick Schistler at Dick at IRLoneStar.com or by phone at 936-647-5747. 